In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to St Peter's on the Quay, um, uh, here in Minehead. I'm Father Simon, the parish priest here, um, and I'm joined today by one of our readers, Hilary, who is going to be preaching uh, today. And in fact, behind me is a picture, a painting that was given to us by a local artist, uh, which depicts Jesus stilling the storm. I'll just move out the way so that you can see it. Hilary will be preaching on this particular gospel today. We take a moment of silence as we prepare to celebrate the holy mysteries of Almighty God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, Amen. our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, you've broken the tyranny of sin, have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. We listen to the word of God. Our reading is taken from St Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, beginning at chapter 6. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, as an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way 
through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships and calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, the calming of a storm is seen as a sign of divine power, because the sea and the wind are seen as forces of chaos, which only God can control. But the storm can also stand for the trials and tribulations which the righteous suffer, and from which only the power of God can save them. And so, in the calming of the storm, the apostles witnessed a work that only God can accomplish. And this, of course, means that Jesus was divine. He had divine power. But also, the lovely part of the story, at the same time, the miracle shows us Jesus' care for his apostles. St Mark is using the story as a catechetical purpose. Now, that's a big word, isn't it? But what it really means is he's using this miracle of Jesus to show us some religious truths. The storm here reflects the post-Easter experiences of the early church. When the disciples have run into all sorts of difficulties and problems, they feel perhaps that the Lord has abandoned them. But they're summoned in the miracle to have faith in his presence with them and his abiding care for them. 
When the apostles got caught in a storm, they turned to Jesus for help and they found it. Now, from time to time, we also get caught in storms, don't we? Our storms usually take the form of trials of one kind or another. It is that at those times, when we must know how to turn to God and trust that he will see us through our storms. One of my favourite saints is Saint Therese of Lisieux. And sometimes she's known as Saint Teresa of the Roses or the Little Flower. During this period of lockdown, I've had lots of time to read, which is great with me. I enjoy it. And I've been rereading her autobiography and the parts where she speaks of her own storms and trials. Well, they've been a great comfort and insight for me. Therese said she had always given her life to God and she chose everything that God wanted to give her, allowing him to look after her completely, giving or taking whatever want God wanted to give or take as her life unfolds. That way, she says, I have nothing to worry about. However, what I like about Therese is that she's also a very down-to-earth saint. And she says she has had experiences both painful as well as sweet. When Therese experienced one of these difficult times, such as when even prayer seems dry or barren, it is, she says, when it seems that Jesus is sleeping in the boat that is my heart. She continues, most people want to wake Jesus up if he seems inattentive to their needs. I let Jesus sleep on. My heart belongs to him whether he is asleep or awake. I won't disturb him. Therese wrote a little poem about this and it's so lovely to be in this particular chapel with the painting behind me and the harbour just outside the window there. But as I read this poem, the rhythm of the words are just like the rise and fall of the waves. She writes, Living on love when Jesus sleeps is rest for me in a stormy sea. Don't be afraid, Lord, that I'll try to awaken you. I'm waiting peacefully for heaven's shore. I live on love. Therese had such confidence and trust just to rest in the Lord's love. But remember, she is a saint and alas, we are not. And we find it very hard not to wake Jesus up. Yes, our faith is strong when things go well, when our world is calm and smooth. Yet as soon as a ripple, let alone a full-blown storm comes along, our faith it wobbles a bit, doesn't it? And maybe we think that God has abandoned us. But today's gospel story shows us that this is not so. Yes, the storm still hit the apostles, even though Jesus was there present with them. So just because a storm strikes, 
doesn't mean that God has abandoned us. If we have faith, we will not doubt that he is with us and we will turn to him in prayer and know his help. St. Therese speaks about real faith. She had found real trust and real confidence, which assures that God is with us in the midst of a storm. It is that conviction, that trust, that confidence that we are not alone which enables us to get through. The gospel story challenges us to challenge and obey, to trust God's power, especially in our storms. For Saint Therese, it was enough for her to know that Jesus was present, even though he quietly slept. She could rest abiding in that love to endure the trials and tests of life. We need, like Therese, to build a relationship with God through prayer. When we have learned to seek him and to trust him in the quiet moments, then most certainly will we find him when the going gets rough. And then, when we absolutely have to wake Jesus, when there is no option, when we cry out from our depths, Jesus will be there to still our storm. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you bring us peace of mind by forgiving our sins. You calm our fears by your presence with us. You uphold us with your grace in times of trial and difficulty. May we have faith, trust and confidence to always feel you near us and rest in your love. Amen. We stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, we pray to God our Father. Gracious God, we pray for the Church, for the Church Universal. We pray for the persecuted Church, those whose lives feel embattened by a perpetual storm of persecution. And we pray for all Church leaders, our Archbishops and our own Bishop Ruth, for the priests and people of the Deanery of Exmoor, Exmoor and for all those who lead in whatever capacity, that they may be graced with great wisdom. We pray for the Church here in Minehead, that we may be clear about our part in your great mission of love and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for the leaders of the nations of the world, we pray for a commitment, a universal commitment to the common good. We pray for a fair share of the world's resources, most particularly for a fair share of vaccinations for COVID. We pray for those in the world who live in poverty or who are oppressed by unjust and corrupt regimes. We ask your blessing upon our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, upon her family and household, and upon our Prime Minister and his Cabinet. We pray for good political leadership at every level within our societies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our home of Minehead. And today we remember the very many tourists who come here to find rest and restoration. And so we pray for those who work in the tourist industry in whatever capacity. We particularly remember Butlins and the West Somerset Railway. Those who run cafes and restaurants those who run hotels and those who run bed and breakfast provision. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we hold up to you those that we know who are sick, be that in body or mind or spirit, those who are living with distress in their lives. We particularly pray for those who live with depression and anxiety or addiction, those living with COVID, those living with unfavourable diagnoses. We remember them before you and humbly ask for your healing touch upon their lives. We give thanks to Lord God for those who commit their lives to alleviating illness in its very many forms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the dead, those who have gone before us, those who taught us the faith, those who have died over the past 17 months. We pray too for those who will die today, especially those who will die as a result of violence or poverty, those who will commit suicide and those who will die all alone. Through your mercy, may the faithful departed rest in peace. And rise in glory. Amen. Alleluia. And finally, we offer our own personal prayers and petitions to you, Lord God. Asking that you hear our prayers. Merciful Father, I accept, accept these, these prayers. prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you're called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes. And peace, justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us into your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, our patrons Michael, Andrew and Peter and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
the God whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend. Show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for joining us today uh, for our parish Eucharist from this really uh, much loved uh, little chapel of St Peter. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love and pray and care for this day and always. Amen. Amen. The Eucharist has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.